Mother of Loom, a single quest module for tabletop role-playing games. The town of Brockenbrook is the largest town in the area. It lies at the heart of the Brockenbracks, a vast area of swamplands. Brockenbrook's economy relies on the abundant loam soil with high clay contents harvested throughout the swamps. For some time, less and less Brockenbrook soil has been delivered to merchants in the surrounding cities and towns. Many of these areas heavily rely on the soil to ensure plentiful harvests and to feed the booming populations of the major cities. People are growing restless and desperate for answers. This single quest module has the party travel to Brockenbrook to try and uncover the reason for the delay in soil exports. They will find a town of sleep-deprived people and a baron at the end of his wits. It can be reasonably adapted and used in almost any tabletop role-playing game for a party of at least two players of any level. You are provided with the story, a small boss encounter and some adversaries compatible with the 20 based systems. You might have to prepare additional foes or adjust given studs, rewards and battle maps as you require. Hooks and Travelling to Brockenbrook Option 1. A Farmer's Peril The party rests at the edge of some fields after a long day of travel. They watch the farmers toiling in the fields until they are eventually approached by a woman of any race, introducing herself as Elise Hemprot, a salt-of-the-earth type person. She saw the party and took them for the adventuring type and was wondering if they'd be willing to lend some aid. Her farm relies on Brockenbrook soil, but they have yet to receive the shipment promised to arrive two weeks ago. She promises a moderate sum as the reward if the party can find and deliver the soil, as well as free food and board for any time they come by the area in the future. Optional additional information. The Brockenbracks are haunted and undead roam the lands. They are generally kept at bay by the Brocken brand, the town's city watch, but she worries there might have been an attack. Option 2. A Merchant's Predicament As the party rests in the city of Julep, in the vicinity of the Brocken Bracks, they are approached by a page who requests them to attend a meeting with their master, the illustrious merchant of earth, wood and stone, Doge Galix Salicus Biddenbet to discuss a high-paying business opportunity. When the party meets the Doge, a very flamboyant and dramatic character, they are impressed by the large, rich estate into which they are invited. The Doge explains in an over-the-top theatrical fashion that My riches will matter not within a fortnight, lest delivery of soil and loam is made to the most generous but ultimately deathly dangerous clients. He offers rich rewards if the party goes to find and bring the soil shipments he is expecting. Optional additional information, he personally knows Baron Brocken, the owner of the soil and loam operations in Brockenbrook, an ancestral ruler of the swamps. Bringing up the Doge's name might help get answers and help quicker. As the party leaves to enter the Brockenbracks, they will find a small toll station at the only major road leading into the swamps, manned by two older men or women of your choice, wearing uniforms of brown and black with shimmering green feathers on their hats. They introduce themselves as the twins Bale and Hay Fastrung, and warn the party to stay on the road at all costs. If they travel safely ahead, they should reach Brockenbrook within a day's travel. They are advised to not trust any screams or pleading for help they might hear from the swamps, especially once dusk falls. Dozens of inexperienced travelers are lost to the spirits haunting the moors each year. They have not seen anyone coming from Brockenbrook for some days now and have no additional news or information to give, but wish the party luck and hope to see them again soon with good news. The party travels through the swamp and must make ability checks or saves to see whether or not they are lured off the path by increasingly intense sounds and yells coming from the swamps off the road. 
the ability check start off against a DC5 EZ and increase in difficulty until they reach their peak at dusk with a DC 15 to 20 very hard or hard. If they succeed the most difficult checks, they become immune to the lures of the swamp spirits. If a party member fails their check or save, they will attempt to enter the swamps to find the origin of the screams or yells for help they can hear from the swamp. Once they step off the road, the party member or members who leave the path must make an ability check or save against a DC-15 hard to see whether or not they are grappled and held by swamp spirits lurking in the dark pools of water for travelers foolish enough to follow their lures. If they fail their check, combat will ensue. Optional combat. Spirits of the Brockenbracks. There are several spirits equal to the size of the party plus four. For example, if the party consists of three players, there will be seven spirits. Several spirits equal to the number of players that have failed their saves and are grappled by the spirits are occupied with grappling their targets and trying to drown them. This is resolved with a strength or equal contest each round. If the spirit wins the ability contest, the player loses a third of their maximum health until they are drowned on the third success by the spirit. If the player wins the contest, they are freed from the grapple. Spirits can either attack or attempt to grapple the player. If your system has a grapple or equal mechanic, use those rules. If not, a grappled character cannot move away from the spirit and must first break the grapple, strength or equal contest, to break free and perform other actions again. A spirit having grappled a player will attempt to drown them. See above. The spirits cannot be cowed into fleeing and will fight until the destruction or banishment. You might need to adjust the following values depending on your TTRPG system, the level and size of the party. Health. The spirits are weak but resistant to regular physical attacks. They have around 10 to 20 health points each. Attack and damage. They can bite or scream into the ear of their victim. Both are close range and single target attacks. Their bite deals moderate damage of 1d8 plus 1 with a low chance to hit with a plus 2. Unless their target is grappled, then it is plus 4. The scream can deal moderate to high damage and always hits unless the party takes measures like plugging their ears with mud, causing silence, etc. With a 2d8 plus 2, each spirit can only scream once for the entire combat encounter. Defense the spirits are easy to hit with a DC of 8 easy but resistant to non-magical attacks taking only half damage from regular weapons. Possible outcomes of the battle. Defeat. A party is drowned. If the party is killed by the spirits, they drown them and drag them deep into the swamps. This is not the end for the adventurers, however, as they are found and resurrected by an undead creature calling itself Mother Loam. They introduce themselves as gardener and keeper of the Brocken Bracks and says that the spirits are little rascals who don't know their own strength. They apologize for the inconvenience and gives the party a lantern made of a solidified vine wrought around a faintly glowing crystal. They explain that this lantern will guide them to the human settlement safely and that no spirits will harm or attack them if they have this. The party is then ushered onto their journey toward the town amid a chorus of hundreds upon hundreds of croaking frogs and toads surrounding the little hut in which they just awoke. If the party decides to attack Mother Loam or any of her critters, she snaps her fingers and all their life force is snuffed out again immediately. Mother Loam will then tut and apologize but she does not grant life to things that take it so unprovoked so she must take back her gift. Victory. The spirits are banished. The party is victorious but cannot find any remains or signs of the spirits after they are defeated, as they seemingly just dissolve into the brackish waters from where they rose to attack them. 
They can now travel the rest of the road unmolested. As a reward, they might find the ragged remains of other travelers who were less fortunate and some minor items of value amidst their belongings like a few coins, a good quality tool and possibly even a minor magic item of unknown make and powers. These remains look to be very old and not to have perished recently. Arriving in Brockenbrook As the party arrives in Brockenbrook, they quickly notice the ever-present croaking of frogs and toads all around the town. The town itself is in decent shape. Old brick and wood houses with vegetable gardens are arrayed around crooked little streets. Harvest decorations, pumpkins, large candles and colorful lanterns are set and hung all around the town. There are few people walking about, and they are shuffling and slow, heads bowed and groaning. A member of the guard, the Brocken Brands, asks the party's business and very slowly brings the party to the town hall to meet Baron Brocken in the town hall. The Baron and his clerk, Jestegard, both have deep dark rings under their bloodshot eyes. They can barely keep awake. With lots of yawning, the Baron informs the party that they are being robbed of their sleep due to the incessant croaking of the frogs. The workers are unable to collect the soil from the swamps and no matter how many frogs they kill, they always seem to return. They are begging the party for help to resolve the plague of frogs, trace it to their source and end the croaking terror once and for all. A Croaky Mess and Mother Loam the party will discover, by investigating the frogs and asking around, that the people have tried first to scare the frogs away by slapping the waters with long reeds and later began killing them, but to no avail. Catching a frog or toad against a DC-5 easy will show them that many of them aren't alive, but undead. Something or someone has resurrected a lot of these creatures. Asking around, the party will be told an old folk tale of an ancient witch that lives deep in the swamps and labors as a groundskeeper of sorts, taking care of the many animals and plants with a particular love for reptiles and amphibians, which make up the majority of the wildlife in the Brocken Bracks. If she were real, and some of the older folk in Brockenbrook believe that to be so, some even claiming to have seen her, describing a tall woman with flowing robes and a headdress with horns, the witch might know more. Option 1. The party knows her. If the party died to the spirits before and were revived by Mother Loam themselves, they will know how to find her. Option 2. The party needs to find her. If the party doesn't know, some of the children around might suggest the party follows the greatest concentration of frogs, as they mostly seem to come from one direction. Doing so will lead them to the hut of the witch with certainty. Once on the way towards the hut of the witch, the party will meet a creature calling itself Mother Loam. It bears no weapons and does not pose any threat despite its gruesome appearance. Her hut is surrounded by a huge choir of toads and frogs croaking melodiously as if making music for Mother Loam. She hears the party and says that, Of course, you little beast is of mine creation. I love you more so dearly and so should the town folk. They eat the nuts and flies, all that buzzes and wishes to suck the people dry of their life force. With an attempt to convince Mother Loam that there is an extraordinary amount of frogs at Brocken Brook against a DC-5 of Easy, the party will make her realize that there shouldn't be a large concentration of frogs there. She tells the party that the frogs and toads used to be spread out across the entire Brocken Bracks, but if they are massing close to settlements, it is likely that they are scared of something. She takes a moment to commune with the swamp and some of the toads to bring the party dire news. It appears that Axenos, the great python, has gorged itself on frogs and toads and they dare not return to the swamps. Mother Loam asks the party to go feed Axenos a piece of specially prepared meat that will sate its hunger and reduce its size permanently so it will no longer pose such a threat to the frog and toad population. In the meantime, Mother Loam will gather the toads and frogs away from Brockenbrook to give the town folks some relief until the situation with Axenos is settled. 
If the party has not already received the vine lantern, they are given it now and it will safely guide them to the nest of Axanos. Final encounter, Axanos. The party will find a large nest built into the reeds of the swamp and signs of a giant snake in the form of large scales and parts of the skin it shed. There are no eggs but plenty of bones. An ability check to investigate the nest further might yield some equipment from unfortunate people devoured by the great snake, including some minor magic items. A check against a DC 10 to 13 moderate will make the party aware of some half-submerged bones that are clearly from large crocodilians. The creatures must have been adults given their size, but an ability check against a DC 15 to 18 hard will reveal that they are bones of a juvenile of this species. As they explore the site, they will be ambushed by Axanos. The great black snake has bright green spots all across its body as it strikes from the brackish waters. The red slitted eyes gleam with hunger and its exposed fangs drip with a sizzling sickly yellow and green liquid. If any of your party attempt to speak to Axanos, all they will get out of the great snake will be Hungry, ever hungry, feed, must feed. Combat, Axanos. The Grand Snake will attempt to first inject its prey with paralyzing poison, and once that has taken effect, it will try to swallow the affected player whole. The snake will not willingly eat the meat, so it will have to be forced to do so. Once the snake has swallowed the prepared meat, it will begin shrinking down and eventually become a snake of regular size. Alternatively, the snake can be killed. You might need to adjust the following values depending on your TTRPG system, the level and size of the party. Health. Axanos fighting the full party should have plenty health to survive several rounds. 100 plus health would be good. Attack and damage. Axanos has a moderate hit chance, plus 5, and deals moderate damage, 1d10 plus 2, with its bite attack and an additional low amount of damage, 1d6 plus 1, of poison damage when they land a hit. The poison also paralyzes the target player for an entire turn until the end of Axanos' next turn, unless the poison is purged before. Axanos will swallow a paralyzed or otherwise incapacitated player with a high hit chance plus 7 and will deal one fourth of the player's maximum health to crush them to death inside their body per turn. The swallowed player cannot see or hear anything and cannot move, but they may attack Axanos from inside the Great Snake. Note. If a player is still inside Axanos when it swallows the prepared meat, it will spit up any remaining player before shrinking down to a regular-sized python. Defense. Axanos is very large but well protected with scales and is thus moderately hard to hit and wound with a DC 12 or higher. Possible outcomes of the battle. Option 1. The party is killed. If the party is defeated, Axanos will devour them all, growing even larger, stronger, and threatening first the town of Brockenbrook and later their surrounding areas. Option 2. The snake is calmed. If the party manages to become the snake with the prepared meat by Mother Loam, it will slither away and resume its regular snake activities. Option 3. The snake is killed. If the party kills Axanos, Mother Loam cannot be found again and the vine lantern the party received will wither and fall apart once they reach Brockenbrook. Rewards and Possibilities If the party went with option 2, Mother Loam will generously reward them with several magic items of her own making aimed at becoming undead creatures or restoring vitality to things such as a comb that will regrow hair if it grew in that spot before, and a pan flute that will turn aggressive undead peaceful for the duration of the song being played on it. Returning to Brockenbrook, the party immediately notices the relative quiet. There are no more swarms of croaking frogs and toads. The people of Brockenbrook will be grateful to the party and name them Croak Croakers, Restorers of Rest or Preservers of Sanity. 
They can rest, eat and sleep in Brockenbrook for free and are given a substantial reward in gold and silver. They are also granted a permanent 5% discount on any soil needs they might have in the future. The people of Brockenbrook will rest for a few nights and possibly throw together a feast and party before resuming regular work again and sending shipments of soil out towards the cities with the party, where the party will receive rewards from their initial quest givers, Alice or Dorj Biddenbet, as per their initial agreements. Where to go next from here is entirely up to you. The quest could be done and not have any further bearing on your ongoing campaign, or you could take one of the following two options to expand on the story if you so desire or your party wishes to learn more. If the party is killed by Arsenos, the insatiable python might become the new big evil thing to go and defeat in another campaign. Option 1. Mother Loam's Request before the party leaves the Broken Bracks, they might receive a message in the form of a flower blooming on the vine lantern, unfurling into something of a scroll made of petals. Written on it is a request by Mother Loam for another visit at her hut. Guided by the lantern, the party will meet the gregarious undead gardener once more and hear her request. She asks the party to take no less than two thousand toads and frogs and find a new home for them, as the swamp has become too swamped. Option 2. A Dire Warning With Axenos out of the picture, a rugged worker named Ulfric Dornmill from one of the soil harvesting outposts in the swamps appears in Brockenbrook just as the party is about to leave. He approaches them and tells them that they have made a grave mistake in removing the giant snake, for it was keeping a population of giant crocodiles at bay by eating their giant crocodile eggs before they could hatch. If the party does not go and deal with them as well, the terror of the past few weeks will seem like nothing compared to a full clutch of giant predators roaming freely in search of enough food for their entire brood. Closing words and credits. I hope you enjoyed this quest and got a good session or two out of it. The entire quest was built on the prompt given by the digital painting and art included in this PDF by the very creative Zebra Feather AH. Social and links below give them a follow and likes, and is part of my first attempts at creating a standalone quest module for any TTRPG system. If you have any feedback or your own artwork of which you'd like me to try and create a similar standalone quest, get in touch via Mastodon, all links and info below. All works within this PDF are copyrighted by the respective creators and may not be used for commercial use. If you share any of the works under the same terms, you must give credit. The standalone quest, Mother Loam, was written and designed by Impra, based on artwork by Zebra Feather. A.H.